MPhil and PhD from PST College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, and started teaching service from 2004 onward. She has been working as an assistant professor in MES Mambad College from 2015 onwards. Her main areas of research interest are fractional impulsive neutral fu functional differential equations and fractional integral differential equations. She has published several articles in various journals and books. From the year 2018 onwards, she has been a research guide under the University of Calicut. On behalf of MPMM SMS College Shornur and all the participants joined in this webinar, I extend a hearty welcome to you, ma'am. And I invite you Thank for the you. presentation. Over to you, Ranjini, ma'am. Thank you, Aradi. Is it audible for you? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, in this pandemic situation, uh, also Sunday, 3 to 4, is uh, a very tedious moment. But I, I can see that 64 people have present in this webinar to uh, learn about fractional calculus. So I'm so happy that I'm going to deliver uh, fractional calculus. It will be, uh, uh, I think it will be useful for you. And uh, our, uh, I thank Chernur SN College, Department of Politics, and uh, all the people, and especially our people. I can admit uh, and uh, and refresh a code. So, uh, uh, so I can be thankful for this. And also, I met the mathematics and uh, the college principal, everyone, to give me an opportunity to present my paper in this webinar. So, thank you, one and all. Then, so I think now I am going to present the PPT. Can I share the PPT? Okay, ma'am. So for that, uh, I'll just give an introduction that is, what is fractional calculus? That means I, we are going to see in this PPT. I When I asked uh, Aradhi Miss, she told that uh, how many uh, participants have uh, registered what are them uh, what are their uh, qualification either uh, students or research scholars because uh, if they are research scholars in uh, various fields or uh, they are using differentiation then i am going to i have to go for higher preference in uh, fractional calculus but uh, now she said that uh, even she didn't know about this fractional calculus it's a new word to me new subject to me in our department also so it will be useful if you are uh, seeing, uh, saying about that uh, very basic things so that all the students can understand like that. So I uh, I came to know about this, uh, the participants are all the students. Is it correct? I think my students also have joined in this group. So apart from them, how many of you know about this fractional calculus? Have you had, had anything about this fractional calculus? Okay, anything. You can use chat box. I can see your messages. No, no. Okay, no says uh, no, Miss. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, I think most of them are students. So I can go by basic level to how it comes to how how it comes in uh, research. Okay. So when we go for a uh, fractional calculus. We know differential calculus, integral calculus. We have studied that. But fractional means it, it is a tradition. That is uh, what we are studying in uh, differential calculus and integral calculus are nothing but a traditional way. So fractional calculus is out of tradition. Okay. Otherwise, we can say that 
uh, ordinary differentiation and integration or the specialization of fractional calculus we can uh, say like that also uh, so these are the two ways okay so is fractional calculus is a fantasy or whether it uh, exists in uh, physical meaning or geometrical meaning exists in uh, fractional calculus and what is fractional calculus where we can apply this is there any application in this area is a uh, research under this is going uh, uh, like uh, it's a new version so the papers under publishing so how many papers we have published what about the research ability what will be the scope that uh, so these are all the questions uh, will come to our mind okay when we heard the name fractional calculus so i'm going to deal with this everything in uh, our ppt that what is fraction what is the history of fractional calculus everything so i hope you will enjoy this session i will uh, take this session as a storytelling okay so i'm going to tell a story about fractional calculus is it audible yes ma'am okay okay now i share the ppt Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Can you all uh, see this PPT? Then I will move on to the session. Uh. Okay, start. Ma'am, now it is not free. Okay. No, ma'am. Now it is seen, right? No? Okay, okay. Now it's clear. Okay. So I'll change to slide view mode. Is it okay? Is it clear now? No. So when I'm changing to slide view, it's not, you can't view that. Okay, yes ma'am, we can see, okay, but I can't hear anything. Now it's okay, madam. You can start. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to 
see in the world of uh, enter into the world of fractional calculus, right? So, what is fractional calculus, right? So, we are all familiar with the normal derivatives, like uh, derivatives and integrals, like dy by dx, d square y by dx square, and the first integral, you know, integral 0 to t f of x dx, and double integral, triple integral, you are all familiar with that. First order, second order derivatives, and first integral, double integral, everything you know. But when you think about half order, d power y2, or i order, or 1 minus 2 i order, complex order, okay, real order or complex order. If you wish to have such a derivative integral like that, what will you do? So the solution to this problem is nothing but fractional calculus, which implies derivatives and integrals of arbitrary real complex order. Is it clear? So that is the definition of fractional calculus. So, so I told you that if one uh, what exists, when will it exist? That uh, uh, that is what's the uh, birthday or birth of that uh, calculus? Okay. So we have to see the birth of that. You know, Leibniz and the hospital. Leibniz in uh, 1695, who is the creation of the Lib famous Leibniz uh, notation that dy by dx. So he created notation dx. When he created the nth derivative d power n d by dt power n, then he, uh, L Hospital, who came to know about that derivative, he asked the Leibniz that what happened if n equal to 1 by 2? He asked that, what happened if n equal to 1 by 2? At the time, Leibniz uh, think that he couldn't uh, uh, answer that, but he said that it will lead to a paradox from which one day useful consequences will be drawn. That was his reply. Okay. So at the moment, he can't say anything about that. He didn't even think about that. But he said that one day, a uh, big a big thing will be happen about this question okay so Leibniz who answered that question in 1695 for the letter which dated 30th September okay so he replied through a letter to a hospital the September 1695 so that year 1695 and the uh, 1695 is known as birth of fractional calculus. Otherwise, we can say that the 30th September is nothing but birthday of fractional calculus. That is a letter from Leibniz to L Hospital, dated 30th September 1695. That date is known as birthday of fractional calculus. See, it's very wonderful, right? <laughs> because uh, all the, if you know, if you can. Um, ask uh, when a functional analysis, when graph theory born, like that can't say anything, but this is, we can say the it's number 93 is the birthday of fractional calculus. Okay. So this is the history of fractional calculus. Uh, the timeline is given, history of fractional calculus. So many authors have contributed, but if you see this, 1700 to 1750, I think you can zoom it, okay. 1700 to 1750, only there are two mathematicians named Leibniz and Newton. They they have contributed the fraction about uh, this fractional uh, derivative in their own way. Okay. Uh, they didn't meet each other or they, they, they didn't uh, talk each other, but they have separated, uh, they have own. Uh, mathematical tool. So with that, they have produced some fractional uh, calculus ideas in 1700 to 1750. But in the time of 1750 to 1800, something uh, increased. That is, two more, four more authors have come to know about this fractional calculus. Then they have contributed their ideas. But when you see 1850 to 1900, see. 1950, you see how many 
uh, of them have contributed. So many mathematicians have come. So uh, almost uh, there are after two hundred years, or uh, after three hundred years only, uh, I came to research this fractional calculus. See, so sixteen ninety five itself the question raised, what if happen when n equal to one by two? But the research happened only in after two hundred years. We can say, okay. So now it is very uh, really going on in the research. Of fractional calculus. Again, if you see the timeline of fractional calculus, I have expanded that one. So, sixteen fifteen to seventeen hundred only in Leibniz, Newton, then I lost that's all. Then seventeen hundred to seventeen fifty, Joseph Fourier came, then Euler, then Lagrange, Laplace. Every uh, standard mathematicians have came to know about this. Okay. Then Abel, who is an important guy in the uh, I will uh, show you that able and a table. Then eighteen hundred Riemann, Louis Leibold, then Grunwald, Weierstrass, Let me go. All the math mathematicians have come after eighteen hundred. Okay, so we are going to see how it now uh, approach to fraction calculus. Okay. So when you go uh, history in DP. In 1730, Euler realized that gamma function has a role in non-integer order. He realized that, so there is a role of gamma function in non-integer order. So he started moving to find fractional derivative in using gamma function. But from 19th century to middle of 20th century, P. S. Laplace to Feller, we have seen in history, the timeline. They have contributed many papers to this area. After that, only the term fractional have mentioned. The, the name is been this nowhere. The term fractional, name of fractional, has been developed after that nineteenth century only. Okay. So in eighteen twelve, Laplace uh, derived in terms of integral. He derived fraction. Interest. Then, then S. F. Laplace, who is the main mathematician most important in this area, he defined the first expression of fractional derivative. Okay, so he is the man to ex first exp give the first expression of a fractional derivative. He used the polynomial function x power m, y is equal to x power m, where m is a positive integer. He uh, Develop d power n y by d x power n that you can find out because you know if y is x power m you can find d y by d x which is m into x power m minus one then d square y by d x square is m into m minus one x power m minus two like that you can differentiate after n the term you'll get a factorial right m m um one two three that is m i m m minus one m minus two etc m minus n minus Minus one x power m minus n, like that you will get. Okay, so when you multiply with the m minus one terms, new uh, numerator and denominator, in the numerator you will get m factorial, denominator m minus. One. That is the all the things you know about this. Okay, so that's why I, I didn't explain that. So m factorial by m minus n factorial x power m minus n. That factorial we can use in gamma function. So gamma function is a main role in Fractional calculus. So, in the definition itself, we are going to use it, uh, use the comma function. So, m factorial can be written as you know by comma, uh, what is that? Uh, gamma function definition, it is gamma m plus n divided by m i n factorial can be written as gamma m minus n plus 1 into x power m minus n. Okay. So, in this, if you set m is 1 and n is equal to 1 by 2, what happened to that? d power 1 by 2 y by d x power 1 by 2. You know gamma value of 1 by 2, gamma 3 by 2, everything. So when you substitute this in the right hand side of the equation, you will get gamma 2 by gamma 3 by 2 into root x. So if you solve it, you will get 2 by root by gamma 3 by 2 is nothing but 1 by 2 into gamma 1 by 2. That is, that 2 can be. Uh, 
in the numerator you can bring it to the numerator and gamma half is root pi so 2 by root pi root x so this is the expression for d power 1 by 2 y by dx power 1 by 2 is it clear so like that you can set uh, more uh, more than half that is you can take n is equal to 3 by 2 or n is equal to 5 by 2 any number you can substitute there you can substitute any value for m also okay so like that you can find d power 1 by 2 d power 3 by 2 the derivative of the function x power m so you can find it like that Fakroy's give that gave that expression using for the fractional derivative of half is it clear so after that jpj fourier in 1822 also commented some papers in fractional practice but until uh, that is i mean um, these year, uh, in those years there there there, there is not a, there was not any uh, application in fractional calculus so far we have derived only the half the derivative 3 by 2 derivative like that but there was no application so what, what was the application for a fractional derivative no one came to know about that until NH able started to give the autocron problem. So what is a autocron problem means uh, to that is uh, you have to find a, a curve for the bead which comes from uh, you can find uh, you can uh, think about a thread you start a bead okay if you release that bead it will come to the end position you know that fraction of seconds right you think you are a uh, what is that uh, mala okay <laughs> okay mm, pattern is okay so if you are uh, taking that if you are taking one bead in that thread okay if you release that bead that will come to the end of this uh, 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 point that no matter where it starts okay so it it independent of the position so that uh, uh, that is the totocron problem after that he find the solution of the totocron problem which uh, which gave a fractional derivative okay so in that problem only came to uh, see the fractional derivative as applied so after able pro produced that then everyone accepted that okay fractional derivative have some application in that okay so from that onwards the fractional calculus have uh, more attention uh, have come more attention to the researchers okay so after that only joseph leeville the first major study of fractional calculus and presented several papers in 1832 and gave a definition based on infinite series okay so he gave the he from the uh, spark of uh, abel's theory we will create a definition, a fractional definition based on infinite series. But again, there is a disadvantage that uh, the uh, infinite series it ha uh, it has a solution. The fractional equation has a solution only if the series are convergent. Okay, so only for convergent infinite series only you can find the solution so that the, he he also find uh, the term d power n y by dx power n equal to 0 which will give you the polynomial you know that uh, when you interrogate that you'll get d power n minus 1 by dx power n minus 1 is a constant then c1x plus c2x well, like that you'll get a polynomial function he found that then he neglected the case for x equal to 0 so which was the contradiction so w center who addressed that then he said that derivative of a constant is not zero according to leeville so again in 1847 Jeff Riemann came with a new idea okay as a student of uh, leeville formed a different theory of fractional operators okay so he came with new ideas that the definitions of fractional derivatives 
but unfortunately it published in 1876 as Raymond Leville fractional derivative after his death. Davis has published all these things. Da Davis, his friend, who published all the all his theories. Okay, so after his death only, see the a student has derived the fractional derivative. So, uh, I think all the students can uh, follow this. Okay, so no matter the student or a teacher or a researcher or a scientist, even a student can perform a better thing. Okay, so here 1826, Raymond who gave the first fractional derivative uh, definition for fractional calculus? Okay, but there was there was a drawback that Riemann label of fractional derivative can be used only for fractional initial conditions. For initial value problem, if you uh, take, it is used only for fractional initial conditions. It was very difficult to handle the problems like initial value and boundary value problems when we deal with initial conditions as fractional initial conditions it's very difficult to handle the situation but uh, also the say uh, one more thing is according to the definition of riemann leeuwin fractional derivative the derivative of a constant is not zero that is also a drawback i will show that a value okay that is also a drawback so capital then in 1967 came a new idea that is a new definition for fractional derivative in his uh, derivative the derivative of a constant is zero we know that in uh, our derivative that is single uh, in uh, uh, ordinary derivative dy for y is a constant dy by dx is zero that we know but in fractional derivative according to riemann leeuwin definition the derivative of a constant is not zero so capital came up with a new idea that he said that according to his definition the derivative of a constant is zero so we will move on to his his ideas right so we will move on to capital's ideas but in certain things raymond level is both certain application. then after that dunwald who came up with different derivative ideas then in 1996 kolo wankar reformed rl General is the Riemann level definition. Then so many authors have produced this uh, derivative. That is the only I can say that that is the only drawback of fractional factors because uh, there are so many definitions according to the authors. Okay, so sometimes may, we can make use of Riemann level, but in some cases it will not uh, suitable for that. So we can move on to capital. Some cases we can move on to grand ball, Lepico. So there are uh, so many definitions in that. That is the only difficulty to handle with the students. So we are studying ordinary derivative, partial derivative in our books, but we can't enter this fractional calculus. But in foreign, they are doing that. But in our cases, we are not uh, including that in a subject because it is difficult situation because there's so many definition not only one definition there are so many definitions to find fractional calculus so to fractional calculus so if you want to study the fractional calculus you have to know these basic functions sum of normal function function laplace or metagla function that will be new to you then metagla function if you know all these things then you can go on study fractional calculus, right? So it's not a difficult one. So, so, I, so I told that there are so many derivatives are there. So I'm going to show you some of the derivatives, how it comes. So if you are under the Riemann legal fractional inter, see the way they presented the ideas are very simple. Okay. But we didn't think. So if you see that for expression of the Riemann level definition, you will consider the Riemann Lien free interval for n belongs to n. Within this, okay, you can know you know that n fold integral, n times integral integral f of you that you must you are you study if you are a PG person, you are you will be studying it with the n fold integral formula that follows here. So in the formula, in right, uh, it has right side one by n minus one. That they have written as gamma function, gamma n. 
I think PG students are there. So if you study three, you can know about this. Okay. And for the internal is available to you. So you this uh, so according to uh, the definition, see, this integral can lie alpha. It is equal to 1 by gamma alpha. It is 0 to t, t minus. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. I don't hear you. Is it okay? Adam, audio is not clear. Sometimes. Okay. Who is It's not audible. It's not audible. No, no, audible, but not clear. Okay. Maybe because of, uh, okay, there are so many. No, my body is not clear. Okay, I'll check it. Is it clear now? No? Hello? Hello? Uh, is it clear? Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, so the uh, using this end pole interval, we who develop this interval formula, which I refer for t is equal to one big of integral zero to t t minus alpha minus Okay, so this is Prima will fractional inter. The same manner we have the fractional derivative d alpha f t is equal to i gamma n minus alpha d by d whole power n in the rest 0 to t minus s the whole power n minus alpha minus 1 f of s d s. Okay, see, I have I told you that the a derivative of constant is not see here d alpha alpha is nothing but you can have any value greater than or equal to zero is uh, zero to one that means by two to uh, three by two five by two like that you can uh, give alpha value see here d alpha of c that means uh, d per alpha by d x per alpha of c constant value is not zero has the value c to t minus a power minus alpha by gamma power minus alpha. You can see that. So according to Riemann level definition, the derivative of a constant is not zero here. That is the only uh, disappointment of uh, our derivative. Okay. So this is our derivative. Now we can go for the capital derivative. Who created from the uh, spark of uh, R L derivative? He has created C1 by gamma of n minus alpha integral a to t, t minus s per n minus alpha minus 1, f, n. That means the difference of RL and capital. Here they have taken the derivative of n, after that they have taken the capital has taken the integral. See, but in the previous derivative, you can integral function n differentiated, not differentiated t by dt power n. Okay, that is the difference of all capital. First, R is taking integration but capital for differentiating the function n times then integration. 
that is the difference between RL and catheter delivery. Okay, researchers are following both things. In new crime all technique of actual delivery. Okay, the delivery formula. What is the delivery formula? Which that you know limitations to zero. F of x plus h minus f of x by h. Okay. So you go for another delivery. F double dash. Put it right. Limit h tends to zero. F dash of x plus h minus f dash of x by h. Okay. Now we are going to substitute for f dash of x plus h. You substitute the definition. And f dash of x is also you are going to substitute. Let me see what happened. So in that case, to, to def differentiate this h, I'm going to take this uh, in f double dash of x. The limit is h one tends to zero. They add h two tends to zero. Okay, just for differentiation of that, I have to know. That's why. Okay, so limit h tends to zero. For so f dash of x plus h definition, they both. Uh, equation you have so just to what happened to this of x plus h1 plus h2 i think you can understand right? minus f dash of x, f of x plus h1 okay so f dash of x plus h you substitute the thing in madam your audio is not clear okay madam okay. your audio is Is it okay? Is it okay? No, madam. Are the teacher? Are the sir? Oh no, Martin on the contact you do. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, headset I think problem. Headset to remove the some side chair. Range in the issue of one chair pretty dry. Mm -mm. Clear and already. Hello. Clear and Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, 
we are seeing for Grunwald Lednikov fractional derivative. So f dash of x, you know, you write f double dash of x. In that, you substitute the value of f dash of x. So you'll get limit h2 tends to 0, f of x plus h1 plus h2 minus f of x plus h1 by h2. Similarly, you substitute for f dash of x, you'll get limit h2 tends to 0, f of x plus h2 minus f of x by h2, okay, divided by h1, okay. So, h1, h2 are all equal to h, a slight difference, that's all. So, if you are taking that to h, what will you get? Limit h tends to 0, f of x plus 2h minus here, f of x plus h1 there, here, f of x plus h2 there. So, if you are taking h1, h2 equal to h, so you'll get minus 2 f of x plus h then plus f of x, x by h square. Already h2, h2, you can take it as h. Denominator, that is h1, h1 is, you can take it as h, so you get h square, okay. So in general, you can write fn of x can be written like this. Sigma minus 1 power n, by using binomial coefficient, you can write like this, okay. So using this, uh, what do you call, uh, the derivative definition, Grunwald and Letico created this, equation. From that, they have created dq f of x. That uh, they have written that simplifying that equation, sigma everything is delta power q. Okay. And it's uh, sub h f of x by h power q. Okay. So, they have written, uh, they have come up, uh, come up with that new definition of derivative using the ordinary derivative definition. So, like that, so many uh, mathematicians have developed their own fractional derivatives. But it is also correct. The way of producing is correct only. So, we can't say anything. So, this is Grunwald's little derivative. Okay. So, there are so many derivatives and integrals. You see Hadamard fractional integral, Achangana Baliano fractional integral, Hadamard derivative. Then he has also created the derivative. Reese derivative, then Miller Rose derivative, Hilfer derivative, Sonnen Letnikov derivative, then Capito Fabrizio fractional derivative, then Carte Gambolo derivative, which is uh, a newly entered derivative, Carte Gambolo derivative. There are so many researches uh, going on in this derivative. So, see how many definitions. So, more than 15 definitions are there in fractional derivative, not a single definition. There are so many definitions in there. Okay. So, is there any properties in fractional calculus, right? So, uh, like our uh, ordinary differential equation and uh, partial differential equation, here also we have some properties. Then, it is also developed by different mathematicians, not by a single mathematician. Also, uh, it can be applied for that definition sometimes. Okay, so identity operator, this is the same for everything, i power 0, f of t equal to f of t, that means i not equal to i, so it is identity operator, fractional is identity operator. Then linearity is also true, fractional differentiation is a linear operation, like what we have done in ordinary differential equation, we can write for fractional also. Then scaling property, so in the application of scaling purpose, we can use this property. This is also holds good. Then composition property. D alpha f of x is D alpha. If alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha 2, etc. plus alpha n, then we can split that. D alpha 1, D alpha 2, etc. D alpha n f of x. Okay. Then if f of t is continuous, then limit alpha tends to 0, i alpha f of t is f of t. Then semi semi group property. That is i alpha, i beta f of t is i of alpha plus beta. This is also true for derivative also. I have here mentioned the integral format i. So here uh, we can also apply d also. So integral and as well as derivative it is true. So i alpha i beta f of t is i alpha plus beta. Uh, so uh, uh, it is also same as i beta i alpha. Okay, f of t. This is also true in ordinary differential equation we have studied. The same thing here. Okay. Then in... Um, Riemann level fractional different integral d alpha i alpha f of t. When you uh, inter, uh, if you take the differentiation of integral say, it will get cancelled. Here also it's a uh, same thing. D alpha i alpha f of t is f of t. So these are all some properties. But sometimes some definitions 
will be satisfying some properties. Okay. So if you want to use that uh, property, you have to go for that definition. Okay. That is the thing we are going to use right here for action attack. Okay. So I, I'm going to give some examples of uh, fractional calculus, right? Uh, uh, to show you that whether it exists, how can we a graph of fractional calculus that you want to know, right? So uh, yesterday only I asked my research students that uh, can you uh, do something to me that find a fractional derivative of y equal to x and give some graph. So within uh, half an hour, they have set everything and uh, uh, mail to me. So uh, in this uh, moment, I have to thank for them also. They are in this group, I know. So <clears throat> so if you consider d alpha of x power p, okay? So again, by the definition, what we have proved uh, in the riemann level operator, most of the, here I am going to use most of the uh, problems uh, using riemann level and capital only, okay? So here d alpha x p means it is, uh, I'm using riemann level fractional derivative of so using that, our formula is gamma 1 plus p by gamma 1 plus p minus alpha x power p minus alpha. That previous side, uh, we have seen that. So here, for x, and if p equal to 1, so y equal to x here. So p equal to 1, if you substitute, you'll get gamma 2 by gamma 2 minus alpha x power 1 minus alpha. So you can substitute alpha equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, like that you'll get all the values of this. Okay, so dy by dx is 1. Okay, I mean if y is equal to x, so that will be 1, a single value. But here you can find different values according to the value of alpha, different values of alpha. Okay, so can you see this figure? So here I think you can zoom in now, then you see the yellow line is alpha equal to 1. As I said, when you differentiate x with respect to x, so dy by dx where y equal to x means it is 1. So the derivative is 1, so it is a single line. Okay? Uh, but when you see alpha equal to c 0.5, it is a green line. Alpha equal to 0.25, it is a red line. Then alpha equal to 0.75, it is blue line. You see the difference. So how accurate we are going to study this uh, uh, whatever we are going to use this uh, application, you can see the accurate result of that. Okay, alpha, when alpha is varying uh, decimal by decimal, you will get different curves for that. So this is the Riemann yield derivative of y equal to x for different values of alpha. Similarly, we have found one more example that is if p equal to 2, so x square. So y equal to x square is a parabola. So in that, we are going to take the derivative of that. So you know the tangent line, right? So if you differentiate alpha times, that is a fractional derivative, you apply the same formula, you'll get gamma 3 by gamma 3 minus alpha, x bar 2 minus alpha. You substitute alpha equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, everything. So you'll get another curve, right? So see, the yellow line is alpha equal to 1, which is the tangent line of y equal to x square parabola. Okay. The derivative. Okay. So here, uh, all the other are uh, slightly different curves when alpha 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Okay. So you can see the uh, graphs of this Riemann label derivative of y equal to x square for different values of alpha. Okay. Then I have told you that whether it has a physical meaning or geometrical meaning, yes, it has some geometrical meaning, but it has not used uh, what we can say that is uh, worldwide, that otherwise uh, the common person can't understand that. Uh, that type of geometrical meaning has not yet come. Okay, but uh, the research is going on in that. It, uh, that is, we can see when... Uh, a function is given when you take the derivative d y by dx, which is a tangent line. Then you take the second derivative d square y by dx square, which is the acceleration. Somewhat it is a curve. Is it clear? So a line, then it is a curve for acceleration. So can we say that 
the derivative of alpha the order is nothing but in between the line and the curve so some sort of uh, uh, research is going on now okay so research is also are uh, thinking about that whether the alpha the order derivative is in between these two maybe but it's not a proof okay so that uh, some physical and geometrical meaning is i have included here so we can see that is y equal to x cube so now we are taking the curve y equal to x cube okay so here according to each that is here point p is given a b so according to alpha that is uh, d alpha y that means d alpha x cube that means here what we have take x square in that place we are taking x cube so you will get some value so according to point 1 point 2 point 3 you will get different values okay so that uh, values we have drawn this curve okay so the blue black green lines are each and every value of alpha that line is uh, mentioned here line 1.0 l 1.0 is a blue line that means for alpha 1.0 that is then l point 8 black line that is for alpha point 8 okay so each and every value of alpha we have drawn this line okay so see uh, suppose for the point p to, uh, one line if you take that blue line that uh, point a is in the x axis b is in the x axis and p is in the curve that will form a triangle there okay so each and every value of uh, alpha we will get a different lines that different lines form a different triangles right so uh, what happened to this is so when the fractional derivative values are increasing the triangle area of triangles are decreased okay that is going to see here okay the same uh, thing we have studied in another function g of x equal to x square 4 plus x cube here we have taken one polynomial function so the graph of x bar 4 plus x cube is in the red curve then for alpha equal to different values we have this uh, lines tangent lines like that we are getting the lines that is for alpha 1.0 uh, sorry 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.9 etc it is given so here also you get a triangle according to that so different values of alpha different fractional derivative values you get different triangles but what happened to the values if you see i didn't bring that uh, table here but what happened to the values if you see the fractional derivative values are increasing means the area of the triangles are decreasing okay so we can say that this is inversely proportional that is d alpha f of x is inversely proportional to 1 by delta delta is nothing but here the area of a triangle okay similarly d alpha g of x that is our function x bar 4 plus x cube that is our new function okay f of x is x cube g of x is x bar 4 plus x cube so both are both says it is inversely proportional to 1 by delta okay so so we can say that if you take delta to the left side d alpha f of x into delta and here also d alpha g of x into delta which is equal to a constant we can say it is a constant okay so what we have observed that if the value of the fractional derivative increases then the area of triangle decreases and from that we can conclude that uh the fractional derivative produces the change in the area of the triangle enclosed by the tangent line and at particular point and vertical line passing through this point and the above x axis with respect to fractional gradient line that is a change of the area occurs using the fractional derivative okay it produces the change of the uh, area okay uh, there is a change in area so it is a physical property right if there is a change in area which is nothing but a physical property so we can say that the derivative use it to that means you can use it to measure the things of pressure uh, flow uh, temperature i mean uh, these are all the things can be measured using this property okay so it changes the area of the triangle means there is some physical property so that changes we can use for finding the changes in uh, temperature pressure whatever it is okay so like that we can find out so this is a geometrical interpretation of uh, fractional calculus okay then then 
to find the solution of the analytically it is very difficult to find the analytical sol solution of fractional calculus you can see the uh, equation so it is very difficult to find in even if some of the ordinary or partial differential equations can't solve by uh, whatever we have studied okay what we are using in normal functions so we will go for numerical methods okay so here also the same thing it is very difficult to find the analytic solution but you can use the two laplace transform metaglot laplace transform to find the solution of this what is that uh, fractional calculus equation so for that you have to know some i am going here i am going to introduce the to find the solution of uh, fractional equation using laplace transform okay i am dealing with only laplace i am showing only laplace transform this is a, there is another way to find out the solution also so laplace transform of derivative you know l of fn of x equal to s power n f of s minus s power n minus 1 f of 0 etc where f of s is l of f of x okay the laplace transform of fractional derivative is nothing but l of d alpha f of x is given okay this is the formula for the inverse laplace transform of fractional derivative formula is also given here we have using that x power beta minus 1 e alpha beta alpha x power alpha that is e alpha beta is nothing but the metag laplace function okay that function value uh, how to find the function is given right side e alpha beta of is that is sigma is that power n by gamma n alpha plus beta so using this you can find the value of beta laplace okay this is the beta laplace function so how to find the solution using all these functions we see so take down the example here we consider the composite fraction oscillation equation d power 2 alpha y of x minus a d power alpha y of x minus b y of x equal to 8. Initial conditions are given. You have to find. So here they are considering two cases. Alpha is from 0 to 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. Okay. So you know how to apply the Laplace transform for a differential equation. Ordinary differential equation, you know. I think you have studied that. So the same way we are going to apply the Laplace transform on this equation, fractional equation. And apply the formulas what we have studies, uh, studied in uh, uh, fractional Laplace transform of fractional derivative. Apply that, you will get the equation like this. From there, you can find f of s equal to 8 s inverse by s power 2 alpha minus a s power alpha minus b. So, f of s is nothing but l of y of x, right? Here we are dealing with y of x. So, you can find y of x by taking the inverse Laplace transform. That will give you l inverse of 8 s inverse by s power 2 alpha. So, using the uh, uh, inverse Laplace transform definition, you can find the value of y of x. The y of x value is given here. See how uh, very big uh, solution it is. Okay. So, here we are getting y of x like this. In case 2, if you are taking alpha 1 by 2 to 1, then also we are getting the same solution. Okay. So, you can see uh, in the interval, they are getting the same thing. So, you can use any one of the interval then. Okay. So, so, here you see the solution is exact solution, okay. What we are getting in this equation using fractional calculus definitions, we are getting the exact solution, okay. So, uh, like that also we can find the solution of fractional equation. I have uh, taken one more uh, problem, this simultaneous equations. See, two equations are given. In the Second equation, y of t equal to sine t. Okay. Then the first equation, you have to find the, find out x of t. Initial conditions are given. You know, f of s, you can take l of y of t. g of x, you can take it as l of x of t. So, you know, you have to find uh, the, uh, you have to take the Laplace transform on both of the equations and simplify. You will get the equations like this. In terms of s, you will get. Okay. That is given in this. Then, f of s equal to 1 by s squared plus 1, you will get f dash of s is minus 2s by s squared plus 1, you will get. So, if you multiply the above equation by s power 1 minus alpha, you can find a g of s also. So, if you know f of s and g of s, then you can find out x of t. Okay. So, so here a g, uh, g of s is given. g of s is L of x of t. So, x of t is L inverse of t. So, using the inverse Laplace transform you can find x of t that is given. So x of t is L inverse of. So if you know the value of L inverse of 1 by s plus s power 1 minus alpha, 
which is E alpha, that is also metagliflar. So you can substitute that. So X of T is given. Okay, using Laplace tensor. So if alpha equal to 1, you will get X of T equal to P sin T plus E power minus T. That is e alpha equal to 1 means see the equation dx of T. That means dx by dt minus t dy by dt plus x of t minus 1 plus t by dt. Okay, first order derivative. So, in that case, the solution is t sin t plus e power minus t, what we are getting is same. So, this is the exact solution using Laplace transform, we can find that. But it's not always possible. Okay. So, these are the, uh, so, so far we have seen uh, what is fractional calculus, what is the history, then uh, uh, what are the uh, definitions uh, come across with the fractional calculus, then uh, what are the definitions mainly used for three definitions we see, then uh, how did you find the solution, then the graph of the fractional calculus, uh, fractional derivative we have seen, some examples we have seen, okay. So, is it acceptable by research community that we have to look at, okay? Is a fractional calculus accepted by research community? You see, 20 books are there. So far, 20 books are available in fractional calculus. Then, first international conference held in uh, US by 1974. In that also, the name test fractional calculus and its application. Okay, that was the first international conference. Then special international conference conducted by the International Federation of Automatic Control every two years. Okay, that is also going on. Then more than lakhs of papers. So see, see uh, when I am entering into the research of fractional calculus, there was uh, not many papers have come. Okay, but when I am leaving my research, there are so many papers I can't see. Uh, my students also telling that how many papers, whatever we are thinking, the papers are available there. So the research is going very fast. The rigorous research is going on in uh, fractional calculus, you see. Uh, because there are so many things to come up. Say that I, I uh, told you that geometrical interpretation, again, that is also uh, it to be come out. So uh, that is not available uh, in many areas. So that is also and a research scope. Okay. So Indian contributors in fractional calculus. So, so who are the in Indians uh, research behind fractional calculus means? These are the things. Uh, some of them are mentioned. Sri Vastava, Canada, then Loknath, Lipnath, US, Lakshmi Gantam is very, very famous in this uh, field. Then Saxena, the, these are all uh, broad based mathematicians. Then, say in Mumbai, Arun Kolvankar, Santanu Das, scientist, ERC Mumbai, then Sen IIT Kharagpur. So, these are the contributors, Indian contributors in fractional calculus, right? Then books. So, I told you that the books, 20 books are there. So, I have listed some of the books. It started from 1974, say 1993. Okay. Then, we are following Kilba's book. Ilbas, Fujillo, and uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. One more person, Sri Vastava. So we are following that book. Then Miller and Rose, that is also a good book. So these are the books we are using in fractional calculus, right? Then in, uh, see, 2010, 12, 13, 15, 18, so the books are coming out. Because uh, an inter introduction for physicists. So, it's again useful for physics also. So mathematical physics are coming mm -hmm. from fractional level. Okay. So so what we are what we are going to notice in this area is see definition of fractional derivative involves an interaction. See when you say uh, see about the fractional derivative, in this interaction is involved, but interaction is a non-local operator. So that implies that fractional derivative is a non-local operator. Okay. Also, calculating the time fractional derivative, we have to go for the past history. That is, if you have, if you want to find out the time line, time fractional derivative at the point t equal to t1 means, you have to know about the past history. That means, from t equal to 0 to t equal to t1, you must know, so that you can find out the uh, future. Okay. So, it's mainly used for modeling systems with memory. Okay. So, memory-related research 
is mainly dealt with uh, fractional derivatives. Okay. Then applications, large applications are there, fractional conservation of mass, ground water flow problem. Okay. So PID controllers. So uh, uh, what's that? Uh, PID controllers is used in every machines and all, but uh, uh, we are developing the PID controllers in fractional level. That is the big disadvantage of this. Okay, because uh, everything is developed in integer order level. PID controllers in car, brake, okay, wherever control is necessary, you can see in every day-to-day uh, -day life, wherever control is necessary, they are using the ordinary controller, PID controller here, the uh, integral derivative controller. Okay, so this is used in ordinary derivative, ordinary integral process. Now we are going to develop this in uh, fractional level. So according to that, the machines and all will be changed. Okay, that is the big issue of that. Okay, so fractional Schrodinger equation, you know, the fractional is available then in viscoelastic materials, polymetric, polymeric materials, in fluid dynamics, then in optics, geology, bios, medicine, in cancer, even in COVID-19, recently, I think more than 20, 25 papers have published in COVID-19 itself. Okay, I will show you the reference. Okay. Then electrical engineering, probability, statistics, everything. And also recently that fractional order models have come for love and emotions also. Okay, so even uh, they have trying to give better representation than the integer order. Okay, we can uh, give fractional order models for emotions and love. So related items. So you can go for the related items. Okay, then uh, if you have time, I'll show you one video. Do you want that? Otherwise, I'll take off. I think the time has 411. It's okay, ma'am. You can continue. Okay. Uh, I think it will come. Let's see. No. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. We can see that. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I'll show you. Okay.
Hello, ma'am. Hello. Is it? Yeah. yeah. We can see that uh, video, but there is no sound. Okay. It's not audible. It's not audible. Yes. Okay. 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 I will. I will uh, explain that. Okay. Okay. See here, uh, they are saying. Yeah, they are saying that suppose if you are uh, burning something or uh, 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 that there will be a current state. Okay, if you are burning that material, you have to reach you. You have a level of uh, thing. Okay, you have to. That is, if you uh, what we can say in gold uh, items, if you are burning, then bending that, you have one target that it must reach that point. But when you bend, sometimes if the hot is overflow, then it will go out of the point. Otherwise, suppose if you are going to filter that, then it will go below that point. That's that they are showing that. Okay, current state is there. What we are get the target is there. If you are uh, burning that uh, material, sometimes it may be overflow, or if you filter that, it will be uh, less. So where, if you use the fractional order here, here it comes fractional calculus. If you are using fractional order, you can control that even in a fraction of seconds. That's why they are telling that. So I think now you can. So that the graph is given. Okay. So what is the drawback here is what I told here. That is, it is uh, normally we have the, uh, whatever controller system is nothing but ordinary derivative control system. The machines are using that control system. But what if you are going integer order system, but we are going to fractional means you have to modify everything. The system also have to cooperate with that. So you have to modify everything according to this fractional order uh, derivative. So that is the only drawback. Otherwise, it can be used in every field. Okay. So now we come to this application. Side. So these are the applications. What I have mentioned, I think you have clear because in this uh, online classes, I can't see your face, uh, your re responses, everything. You can't mute and say something. So it's one man show. I have to uh, tell everything. <laughs> okay. I have to love. I have to uh, teach everything uh, my own way. Okay. So I can't even see you. So that is a big drawback of this online course. Anyway. So I'm going to finish up this uh, research in fractional calculus. So Aradim has told me that if if you tell me about the scope on research in fractional calculus, that will be useful for our students like that. So you can uh, that is I told you that in analytic solution it is very difficult. Uh, I mean, analytic method it is very difficult to find the solution of fractional calculus. But you can go for numerical methods. My students are also do, doing that methods to find the solution of fractional calculus. So these are the Methods we can apply. Not only this, more of uh, these are available. So one of the terms, some of the terms I, I have given here. So it is uh, a Dithlem's fractional backward difference based on quadrature, then Lubick's fractional backward difference methods, Adamian's method, decomposition method you have studied, I think. So that also apply FDM, that is finite difference method, then finite element, finite decomposition method, finite element method that is also available then for Lebanese matrix approach to find the solution is also you can use the homotopy method, variational VIM, variational iteration method, series method, using infinite series you can find the solution. So these are all the methods you can find, use to find the solution. This is under research. These are all uh, research is going on in uh, fractional calculus. Then in other branch if I see uh, in graph theory, fractional graph theory also it is the book is available. See fractional graph theory. In this, uh, you can find out the fractional coloring. You know, graph coloring, graph edging, 
So same thing, they have developed a fractional coloring, fractional isomorphism, fractional odds and events. Everything is developed. Okay, in this book, it is given very clearly. Then uh, in functional calculus also, see fractional calculus, we have functional calculus, theory and application also available from 2002. Okay, then uh, come on the existence uniqueness part is uh, highly developed in fractional calculus because there, there is a limitage of uh, physical application, a geometrical application in fractional calculus. That's why the theory part is uh, improving a lot. Okay, existence and uniqueness you can find if you have a system. You see, in ordinary differential equation, you have studied a well posed problem. That means if you can find existence, if you can find the existence of a problem, uniqueness of a problem, stability. If you are taking these three activities, then we can say that it is a well posed problem. Okay, so here also, uh, in fractional calculus, also all the existence, uniqueness, only uh, stability, controllability part is working on. Okay, there are uh, so many papers have been published in this area. So using topology, I have searched the fractional calculus in topology that is also available. So the existence, uniqueness and topological structure of solution is also available. In 2010, they have published in uh, LC well. Okay. Then COVID-19. See the recent paper, April 2020, they have developed a model, mathematical model of COVID-19. You know, SIR model, right? Susceptible, injective, then uh, removed or uh, so that is SIR model, okay? So that uh, that model we can develop by uh, fractional calculus, okay? SIR model is also available in fractional derivative. So here they have developed a mathematical model of COVID-19. There are so many papers in April 19, April 17, June 17, the papers are coming on, okay? So this research is going on in fractional derivative. So in cancer, it's all available. Biochemical also it is available. So these are the other fields we can apply fractional calculus. So with this, I'm winding up the session. Thank you all for the, for your patience. There were so many interruptions have been come, but see, uh, I think you you are all there. No one is leaving this. I think. Okay. Uh, so if you have any doubts, you can ask me. I know I will tell you okay. my knowledge. Is there any doubt? Uh, Aradimis, is it okay? I'm winding up this. 422. Okay, ma'am. So, thank you so much for this informative session. It was really nice. Thank you. So, now, the time for this session. Participants can ask questions either unmuting yourself or you can put questions in the chat box. No participant can interact with the resource person. Whatever doubts you can you may ask. No I think it's a new uh, term for them. So, so understanding with this is uh, very difficult anyway. Can we apply the concept of fraction? Yeah, fuzzy, fuzzy. Uh, I missed out that uh, reference paper. Fuzzy in fractional derivative can be applied in fuzzy graph also. Fuzzy set also. It is available in the Google. You can search over that. Then you can find out more papers in that. Fuzzy graph is also available.
Any question? Just I want to give some introduction and uh, what are the development in fractional calculus. That's all. I didn't go into the detail of fractional calculus. Just a basic idea I have given. So thank you all for the support and cooperation. Please fill the feedback form before leaving the platform. So this is also my new experience, the first time in webinar. So I, I even know about what the audience will feel. Uh, whether it was good or bad, I don't know. Anyway. Ma'am, I'm also for the first time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has the first team. <laughs> okay. Are the teacher doubt till yet? And I'm good. I'm Ma'am, yeah, in your question, the after relay, the area is right on. Information. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, graph coloring and fractional coloring and fractional uh, odds and events in the uh, uh, fractional uh, trees. Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, fractional uh, fractional uh, available. Hypergraphs. Hypergraphs and the book on a city to other hypergraphs and the LA area other than upon Amalka Adliki, Hogan Ingle, form it. Hypergraphs are recurring in fractional order, or you can look at Jay and for graph theory, it can all and then wearing in Idiliki and England tries. Even I can go for that also. Fractional Fractional or idea could turn in graph theory, the hypergraphs say never your idea. And then the same. And that's if a graph coloring is a reward with chain is wounded. Apo Adaluru, Pudioru, and then the extra condora, and this is a company fractional condora, fractional coloring in the dish. I'm going to research it. Other paper covered the blood. In the end of such an argument of the graph theory law. I mean, fractional graph theory is a fractional. But I Anybody has questions? And there is one question. Can we connect fractional calculus with Fourier transform? 
Fourier transform. I am going to talk about the Laplace transform. Fourier transform is the advantage of the series solution. That is why you can apply the Fourier transform to the Fourier transform. I am going to talk about the ordinary differential equation. We don't have the same format. We don't have the same format. We don't have the same format. If you use Laplace transform, you can use the solution. If you use the Fourier transform, you can use the series solution. You can use the series solution to the infinite series solution. You can use the Fourier transform. Now, we have a Anybody Madam, my question by Mridula Ketty. Hmm. How can we relate homotopy and fractional calculus? How can we relate homotopy and fractional calculus? But you can search for searching Google. Homotopy relate to chain But homotopy fractional calculus uh अच्छा रहेंगे ना यार नूला नमल का फील्ड लिके एट्रा ये ले आ रहे हैं हम बेचने में नमल अदली के पोवा तो उन्हें इनके अंदर डिटेल्स क्लियर आए थे अरे नहीं ना बट होमोटोपी फैक्शनल कैलकुलस आए तो क्लियर कर पेपर से उन्हें यू कैन सर्च इन गूगल यू कैन फाइंड इट बिकॉज़ नमल फैक्शनल वाला � Enggana aduh, orang tu orang tu dia area. So topology related ayam, graph theory related ayam. Nama la adunya kurang detail ada ini ni aduh full lum, orang tu paper itu ni aduh full lum wajib manfaat kita ada. So homotopy related ayam, but enggana related ayam ni mula tu, nama kita tu search je dari mana. Any other question? Are the teacher and I conclude here, like? Okay, sir. Well, now it's asking in systems now, so we can conclude. So, first of all, I express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Rinsley Injini because you have spent your valuable time for us. And your presentation was very informative. And all the participants in this webinar, uh, I express my gratitude to you, ma'am. Thank you, so, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. It was a nice 
uh, experience too. Thanks, thanks too. Okay, thank you. We also thank our uh, principal, Dr. Shadira, uh, our executive coordinator, Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Uh